What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of The Real Housewives of Potomac Season 4, Episode 11. Can I get a witness? Okay. So it starts off with um, Candace is at her house, um, at her mother's husband house. Okay. And, you know, her mom comes over and they're actually doing the homework assignment that Dr. Ken get, uh, told them to do, you know, for their therapy assignment, you know, um, making lists of what it is that they plan on changing and right off the back the mom starts saying things that she wanted Candace to start changing and so Candace had to change that up no girl we need what you gonna do okay and um you know she was like no don't, don't be shady no jabs you know you can give your opinions but I have to be open to your opinions don't give the unsolicited advice and stuff like that and you know the mama kept <laughs> you know and <laughs> You find that funny? I mean, you know, you just have to allow me to mother you and I'm an old dog and all this stuff. And she was psychoanalyzing Candace. I said, you know what? It's cool that y'all trying to start this or whatever. This is the first step. But given the mother and like she said, she's already determined that she's not going to change because she's an old dog in this thing. You know what I'm saying? That's her words. Um, Yeah, she is going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot. She is not about to change overnight. And she's not about to change over the month. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take a long while for her to get it in her head that she needs to treat this girl like an adult. But, um, the fuck is that? Hair. But, um, moving on from them, you know, they get into Monique driving with her son and, you know, asking, do he want another, are you done after this, a sibling? He was like, oh, I think I'm done. <laughs> well, we're going to have to tell daddy, okay? I said, whatever. Monique going to wind up being pregnant next season, too. <laughs> if it's up to Chris, if it's up to Chris, he gonna wind up being pregnant next season too. Then we get Ashley. Okay, Ashley is, you know, <clears throat> doing some dated and heels things at um the restaurant. Michael isn't there. Um, they get finished with what they were doing, and then her friend Eve is trying to talk to her, basically saying is everything okay? And she was like, yeah, everything is all good. And you know, this whole situation has made me and Michael closer. And I'm sitting here like. Okay, if that's what you want us to believe. Okay, that's what you want us to believe. He made the... Oh, hey, what do I say? But, um, you know, then Giselle comes in. And see, Giselle is just messy. Giselle tries to hide and distinguish it, disguise it as if she's trying to be there for her friend. You know, so... Um, how's everything doing? And then how are you doing? I thought Michael would be here. Well, Michael is over there doing what he got to do with his own business, other business that he got, you know, then we're going to meet up. We got a day, you know, we ovulating or whatever. So we got to have sex and then we have sex two times a day. Plus we had sex two times doing our ovulation and stuff like that. Too much information, Ashley. We didn't know that. Need to know that. They did have a little baby boy already. So I guess congratulations is in order for that. Um, so at this point, while they're sitting there talking, Giselle brings up, you know, so I'm up here doing my whole thing with my uh, ever true. And so people ask about two questions. What about this shade? And then what's going on with Ashley's husband? I don't know what to say about it. You say mind your business. It ain't my business. You need to ask her. That's what you need to say about it. Because I'm looking out for my friend. And, you know, I don't want people saying things and all this stuff. And, you know, he's going to court for grabbing people's butts and stuff like that. So you're trying to basically say that you believe these allegations. I mean, I'm just saying he's done this before, right? He has ping somebody but who was his friend in jest not just nobody that's a stranger and all this stuff and me and Giselle like girl okay Giselle you messy as shit but you got to the meat and potatoes of what we wanted to know so I can't really go in but bitch I can um that ain't none of your goddamn business but it's out there in the public so you know we had questions too so I guess a thank you was in order for um asking it because you know she trying to pry out what we want to know but um if you my friend I ain't finna um do all this to you I'll let you come to me with some mess like this. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not going to try to be all up in your business and make things even more difficult. But Ashley is lying, okay? Ashley is lying and Ashley is trying to put on this disguise and put on this face as if everything is okay. And she knows that it's not. So, hey, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Do you believe Ashley or not? And somebody brought up a good point in the comments last week about, you know, um, 
you know, Karen and them saying <laughs> she can't talk about it. She can't talk about it. Karen said the same thing with the tax stuff. I can't talk about it because, you know, this ain't my doing, this Bray's doing. Ashley is saying the exact same thing when um Giselle was asking about, you know, how she feel and what, what went on. I can't talk about it because, you know, I wasn't in the meetings with Michael. I don't know what's going on. This is his deal. And you know a lot. You know a lot more than you're trying to say. Just say you don't want to say shit because it ain't none of y'all business. That's basically all you have to say. So, Chris and Monique, they're about to go see the sonogram of their baby. They don't know what the baby sex is, and they got the kids with them. Then Karen comes up. Before that, Chris was like, you know what? I'm kind of disappointed in you about what happened at that whole damn because you pregnant. You trying to threaten to drag somebody, whatever. What could have happened? She was like, you know what? I know, baby. And uh, I'm sorry for that. But, you know, you know, it wasn't me just really saying that I was going to actually do it. It was just, you know, just me being in my feelings or whatever, trying to reel this girl in and all that stuff. Like, you ain't gonna pump me right now just because I'm pregnant or whatever and so Karen and um Candace actually show up and you know um Monique looked at it as the olive branch whatever and come to find out um first of fucking all <laughs> first of fucking all I don't know what's going on with this episode, but the confessional looks. First, Katie had a new wig. Burn it, bitch. It's not worth her face. I don't know who did her makeup with that wig on. That that It was too much. It was too much. It was trying to cover her forehead. I don't know what was going on. It looked like a mop, okay? It looked like a literal mop on her head. Rick James and this bitch, okay? And then Karen had her little Cruella the Bill shortcut and everything, 27 piece up on her head. I said, okay, bitch. <laughs> It, it aged her, to be quite honest. It aged her. But if she like it, she gonna wig. That's all I can say about that. But, you know, um, they saw the little sonogram of the kid and uh, the baby. And you know, Karen and um, had a little talk with Monique and Candace. And, you know, trying to get to where they at. And they realized that, you know, they did kind of mess up a little bit. But, you know, they apologized to each other right after the whole thing. Had a little text conversation. They showed that. And it was like, they argue like sisters, okay? And, you know, Candace was saying, this is what happens with her sister sometime. And then um, Karen was asking, what's really going on? Because you're letting your issues that's going on with your mom spill over with your friends and stuff. And then that's what, you know, Candace been saying, what's been going on. You know, she's been letting these issues that she's been having with her mother spill over into her personal life with other people who are not trying to do anything to her. And, you know, just being in close proximity of her, being in the business with her, you know, um, living under her roof per se, um, that she's helping pay for and then not getting the respect that she wants and not trusting people at the same time. It's like, let me throw the dagger before you throw the dagger at me. And so, you know, they understand where she's coming from now and, you know, hoping that the girl get through the shit. That's basically it. Okay. Then we had this little, I will say it was a cute scene with Giselle and her daughters. They going apple picking and, <laughs> oh my God, mom, they're all dead. Them apples. I said, what bootleg ass farm did y'all go to, um, um, Giselle? What was this? Giselle was like, this was not on the goddamn brochure, okay? These apples are supposed to be looking vibrant as shit. These motherfuckers dull, dead, molded, and all this stuff. I said, baby, don't go there. Don't pick that one, Giselle. We can see from the camera up in our own house that that shit ain't right. Okay, go further down. Go, no, no, go further down, further down, right there, right, right there. Get the Granny Smith, get the Granny Smith, right there, okay, you know. And so, um, they do that, and they have a little moment where they're sitting down eating ice cream, and, you know, um, they were asking, she was asking how they been, and are they happy about moving into the new house, and, you know, uh, well, getting a new house, and gutting it out, and making it to their liking, and, you know, they're okay with it. Not really much, you know, enthusiastic as Giselle would like. And, um, you know, she was asking them about their games and stuff and asking them how they feel about her. And the little girl, Angel, just put it all out there, you know, while um, Grace in the door was just like, Mommy, you good. It's all great. And, I mean, you missed a couple of games or whatever, but it's cool. Angel was like, so first of all, look, sis, I know you my mom and all that, but let me just tell you the real. The real is this. Grace is your favorite. Adore is the one that you like the best, okay? You always giving her all the time. And then you just leave me out to the uh, 
pass it a dry. Like, bitch, you don't like me in something. Girl, no, that ain't what it is. That ain't what it is. Like, Grace, she likes to come in and cuddle with me. I need to focus on the door because I'm trying to get her in high school or whatever. And then you, you like, you don't really want to open up to me. You don't want to do this. And she said, um, Angel is mostly like her. You know, you got to pull stuff out of her. She's reserved. I said, Grace, uh, um, Giselle, where you reserved that? But okay, if that's what you, you know your kids. And I felt that was a good moment. I feel like a lot of parents need to sit down and have, especially when you have multiple kids, you need to sit down and have a conversation with all of your kids and get their thoughts on how they feel and what's going on. Because some of them do have that feeling that they're being left out or looked over. Like La Angel, she said, you show, you need to show a lot less favoritism. And you know, I feel like parents be lying when they say they don't have a favorite. They be lying, okay? They just don't want to hurt the kids' um, feelings, okay? That's what it is. I feel like all parents, if you have multiple kids, you have a favorite. Not that you are my favorite. Bullshit, bullshit. I know my mom got a favorite. I'm not going to tell you which one it is because they probably watching, but I know she got a favorite, okay? But um, it is what it is. Um, And so that was a little cute moment. I, I, I actually enjoyed it. So we get the scene where um, Robin, she's going to get her hair done by her stylist that been her stylist for 15 years and... She basically telling her um, about the fact that, hmm, okay, but anyway, no, I'm sorry. She basically telling her that Juan want to try for another baby. They going to get out this, you know, hopefully she didn't know that they had to do an open house, you know, with the house once it got done to put it on the market. Me and Shirley looking like, girl, duh, how you think you going to sell the bitch? Okay, come on. But um, anyway. This whole want to have a baby girl and all this stuff. I said she he want to have a baby girl with who? Are you sure it's with you? You know? But she said that he feels a type of way about the fact that when the other two boys were born, he really wasn't there much and didn't partake much in, you know, their birth and all of that stuff. And so this is like him doing a redo or whatever the fuck. And he grew up with siblings and or sisters or some shit like that. And um, the, the hairstylist was like, girl, go on here to get that man a baby. I said, you are not a good friend. Okay. You're not a good friend. You shut your mouth up. And no, no, don't lead her down this path. The one thing I can think, um, you know, Robin has since another say, if I'm going to give him another child, don't you think we need to think about remarrying or something like that? Yes. Okay. Then at this point, I zoned the fuck out. I was looking at her hair and I said, I ain't really like it. I ain't really like it. So moving on from that, um, Ashley goes to see her therapist that she hasn't been to in a while. And, you know, they was just talking about everything that just happened. You know, when she first found out the news about, um, you know, Michael, she was shocked. She, she didn't know how to feel. And, you know, she was like, I put on this face. This is exactly what she did. She put on a face. She wanted to be sad. She wanted to break down, but she didn't want to do that for him so that it would make him feel bad and all that stuff. So her thing was, let me come out like I'm okay and happy and everything. And that's exactly what she did when she presented that face to the girls at the hold down or whatever. And then, you know, um, the therapist was like, could that be steaming from something from your childhood, you know, with going on with your own father and all that stuff? And we're like, yeah, I look at Michael as a paternal figure. I said, you know what? Okay, Ashley, we already knew this shit. We could have told you that and saved you a whole bunch of money. So basically, Ashley in therapy talking about her daddy issues, how he not there, how basically that's the reason why, you know, sometimes she think of uh, Michael in a paternal way as two sides and all that stuff. And, you know, she that little girl that wanted a hug from him and talk to the heir or whatever, thinking that he'd show up and ask the mama where he at and all that stuff. I don't know what they were trying to make us do. I mean, they hit on a, a subject that a lot of us can relate to, okay? A lot of us can relate to, you know, not having daddy in the house, you know what I'm saying? And not knowing where that nigga but do we care about Ashley? That's the question. Is it gonna really soften our heart to uh um her? Mm, it didn't do nothing to me. So moving on from that, I'm really liking Giselle gets on my nerve, but I'm really liking these scenes with her and her kids. You know, putting her in a less messy um space. You know, and giving her something real to actually do. And to be concerned with the well-being of her kids and the emotional state that they're in. And, you know, she takes little Angel to go to a little chocolate shop, whatever. They have, you know, um, some little sweets and cho hot chocolate. And, you know, she was like, remember when we went apple picking and, you know, you did the... um." 
rating, I asked y'all to rate your mom and you gave me a 79%. And she said, no, she said a 70%. She was like, no, I gave you a 79. Okay. And that was just being nice. Okay. I was just trying to be nice at that moment. So that written, that 79 was literally lower than that. Okay. And, um, you know, she was just basically saying, I feel like a door is your favorite. Um, you make me feel as if I'm not important. And it was like, I don't have to worry about you. That's the thing. It's not that I don't want you to feel like you're not important. It's just that I don't have to worry about you. But maybe you should. You should check in. You should worry and all this stuff. And I'm glad Giselle was hearing her out as to what she was trying to say. And she wasn't coming back. I mean, I granted she's young. And she could say, well, I'm your mom and I do this and I do that. And you should be thankful for this and thankful for that. No, she allowed her daughter to talk. She allowed her daughter to get out what she was feeling. And she was listening to her and taking into consideration what she was saying and putting forth some type of solutions to work towards getting them into a better headspace at least getting angel into a better headspace with her you know doing mommy daughter projects and stuff like that and telling her exactly why she doesn't have to worry about her that much because you are her least troubled child you know you don't you do everything that you need to do and she don't have to worry about you that much. And, you know, she was like, well, maybe because I don't have to worry about you does not mean that I shouldn't check in with you. So I need to do that. And I, I liked the whole little talk. She was like, you know, did um my point system go up to 80 or whatever? She was like, no, girl, it's still at 79 for real this time. It's at 79. And um, Grace and the door, they probably was lying to your ass anyway when they said that shit just so they won't hurt your feelings. I said, look, Angel, I like you. I like you. <laughs> So Ashley goes over to her mother's house and, you know, she's trying to get some answers from her mother about the relationship that the mother had with the father, how that Ashley came to be, you know, he said he wanted to be a father, he wanted to be there and all that stuff. But then when the baby came, shit just changed and all that. She only remembers one conversation that she had with her dad. And that was when she was like three, four years old on the phone. Um, she found him on Facebook. She just sent the message and said, you know, I'm your daughter. I don't want anything from you or anything. I just wanted to understand what's going on. And he blocks her on Facebook. Baby, what is Bravo trying to do? Okay, Bravo really hit on just about everybody's daddy issues tonight. Okay, bitch, we sitting here looking like... Damn, if it was from the right person, we probably would feel something. I ain't even gonna fucking lie. Like, I'm sitting here like, girl, been there, done that. Um, shit happens, you know, you beating a dead horse. We all been through, a lot of us, unfortunately, been through the same subject about, you know, having abandonment issues, fathers not being in the pictures, mothers not being in the pictures, okay? Um, you trying to use this as a reason why you act the way that you act, okay? I'm not buying it because you're still a grown-ass woman and you still know right from wrong and the shit that you've done and stuff like that, but okay. Um... But, I mean, it was fucked up that he blocked her. Like, he, he trashed for that. I told y'all my story. Like, me and my daddy worked in the damn same fucking place on the same floor. And we never really had much to say to each other, if that. You know, I wouldn't know what to say to him. Even if we were in a um, room for five minutes together, like, I wouldn't know what to say. And then going to send my mama a text, talk about something he wish he would have, you know, been there a little bit more and all this stuff and gotten to know us or whatever. And she was like, well, why are you telling us, to, telling me that? Tell them they grown the shit. <laughs> you got their number, okay? But, hey, it is what it is. I'm sitting here like, Ashley, okay, you know, that's fucked up, but... Can we move on? Okay. It was really fucked up. I ain't even gonna lie. It was really messed up when she looked on her mama Facebook and found out that he didn't block the mama, but he blocked the child. And then on the daddy Facebook, he got all his other kids. So Ashley got siblings and stuff. But daddy, you fucked up for that. You know, you ain't want to have no um, communication with her. At least put her in communication with her siblings that she got. Okay. And, um, you know... That's why she got daddy issues. That's why she with Michael. Part of the reason, main reason why she with him. I don't care what nobody say. And then, you know, she thinking about going down there to find him. Like, I don't want nothing from you. I just want acknowledgement, whatever. I said, girl, you finna put yourself in the world for the hurt. Okay, that's what you feel like. You mean the man just blocked you on Facebook. That's very telling. Okay, Michael don't think it's a good idea. The mama think it's a good idea. I said, girl, hold your horses and, um... Buckle up, because you just don't know what ride you about to take now. So, you got Candace and Chris going on a double, well, it's a triple date with um Karen and um Ray, okay, and Chris and Monique. So, you know, everything's all good. We don't need to discuss what was said in the car. Moving on, they was already at the restaurant. Baby, 
Karen said it's good to see uh, Candace out here and so that she can see exactly how a real marriage works so she won't end up alone and dusty like um, Giselle divorcing by herself in, on a lonely island. I said, girl, you ain't have to throw all them shots like that. Pew, 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 pew. Damn, Karen. <laughs> El Corella, the bill ass wig. You better do that shit, bitch. Girl. You know, she's sitting there eating that muscle. Was it a muscle or a clam? Either one. She was like, look here, Ray. Look. Look here, babe. And he was like, I said, he about to stroke out at the table. Don't do that. Don't do too much something like that, okay? Not too much. You got to ease it on there. Just because you mature don't mean that you don't make love. I said, girl, we didn't need to know that. We knew that, but we didn't need to know that from you, okay? And did you hear when um Monique was showing Ray the uh, sonogram? <laughs> Karen gonna say so. We about to try for another baby too. I said, bitch, I know you gotta be lying and you gotta be fucking joking, girl. Like Moni said, ain't nothing coming up out of that shit but dust, bitch. What are you talking about? But then again, you just never know. You never know, okay? The human body is a working wonder. But anyway, um, they start talking about can Ray said, Candace, you really are a good singer or whatever. Unlike some other people that be out here trying to sing. And then Monique said, I said, oh, Uncle Ray made a little shot. Okay, I see you. And Monique said, speaking of non-singers, I met up with Ashley. You know, she said this whole thing actually made her and um, Michael closer and all this shit. And um, it was like, how did you make him closer when you're going through all this stuff? He over here pinching asses and stuff. You might be going to jail. What is going on? I said, Candace, let's let it go. Let it go. Don't look too deep into it. The girl is putting the face on. You know, she's rehearsed this answer time and time again because this is not the first time she just said that to somebody. You know, um, they talking about it has to be somebody that has seen this. You know, if it happened at the rainbow party, they said that this was when Michael was downstairs in the basement and they was waiting on his ass so they could do a picture. I said, what are you in their house downstairs in the basement doing what? Doing what? Are you sure that's all that went down in the basement? It's going down basement. Okay, bitch, what? Michael, what are you doing? <laughs> are you serious? And then Chris said, um, Candace Chris said that, you know, he was called as a potential witness, you know, and the camera guy was telling him some stuff and girl, it's just a hot mess. And then Chris, Monique Chris asked, was there any witnesses who heard him say the line about, you know, the uh, whole penis thing? And it was like, Chris, Robin. And me, Candace said that. He was like, well, if dude did the stuff, he needs to be roasted. He needs to have all the stuff happen, but damn. And I was just like, oh, this is just a hot-ass mess, okay? Girl, like they said, if it's footage, it's bound to come out, but I don't know. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode, and I will see you guys later. Peace.